What's going on guys? Uh, Kenny here again and today I've got another hype versus reality video for you and what this going to be about today is the Boost Blades Smoke. Oh, that's right guys. Um, this little guy it was uh, designed and created by Will Boost um, who was an engineer. I think just more of a knife enthusiast and decided to go ahead and get his hands in on a uh, knife design. Um, he went ahead and had this knife uh, manufactured by Wii. I'm not sure how he went about it, but he went ahead and had this manufactured by Wii, which was a good choice. And um, this is done with titanium, obviously a front flipper, as you guys can see, and M390 steel. Let's see if I can get that. There you go. There's a Boost Blades. That's their uh, logo. It's just like a... A puppy like I forget what kind of dog that is uh, like a sheep dog but yeah really nice touch with that's pretty much the only branding on this thing uh, it does have a kind of a, a funky uh, pivot but it is just a torx on the other side so it's not a proprietary pivot um, but that's a nice touch that just kind of holds it in place um, in saying that as I said this is going to be a hype versus reality review and how I go about that is I'm going to go ahead and do the specs. Then I'll go ahead and do uh, size comparisons. You'll get the hype, which is, um, you know, the manufacturer, designer, uh, community hype, whatever it may be, uh, personal hype. Um, and then from there, we'll go into the reality, uh, what I actually uh, found in use and, um, and, you know, once I got it out of the box. So uh, going right into it, I'm going to go ahead and throw the specs up on the page right here. I don't want to waste you guys' time and spew off a bunch of specs, so I'll try and get that out of the way, and then I'll go ahead and bring you guys back, and I'll do some size comparisons. First things first, we'll go ahead and do the 940. Uh, this is a really good size comparison, guys. The best of them, probably. And this is what would, uh, you know, that's what would be competing for my pocket space between them. Uh, I'll go ahead and bring in the bug out as well. See the bug out's a smaller knife. Then we'll go ahead and bring in a Manix 2. This is the lightweight Maximate version. And a pair of three. This is the knife center uh, crewwear smooth G10 version. And then we'll go ahead and bring in our budget option that I've been bringing in lately and do the um, Civivi back, Backlash. Really similar size knife. So that'll give you a good uh, impression of the length at least, not as much the girth of the knife. <laughs> um, yeah, so moving right along, I'll go into the hype. Um, this knife, uh, it did have a good amount of hype on it. Um, I was looking at these a long time ago, maybe like six months ago. Uh, from what I had seen on YouTube and on uh, just like blade forms and stuff, I, I don't really follow blade forms, guys, but when I search things, sometimes blade forms comes up. And um, they, they're hard to get. Uh, these are manufactured by Wii, and I don't know how many, run, how many he does in a run, but it seems like uh, there's always some kind of like waiting line for them. And I don't know if that's by design, because if you guys think about it, in today's society, the more hype things have, the more you can sell them for. And guys, you're fueling the fire here, okay? Um, when I say you, I mean we all are, but we're fueling the fire. If, if you refuse to pay the price, they have to lower it. But because people are getting so like amped up on things and making it like, oh, they're worth more than they are, it's... It, it creates this hype that now everything gets inflated. And that's why we're seeing such high prices on some things where you don't think it should be sold for that price. Well, people are buying it. So then we're just fueling the fire, essentially. Just like with gas prices. If everyone's so upset about gas prices, just stop buying gas. Ride a bike. Ride a freaking bus. You know, it, you're not going to change the world by just bitching and moaning. So anyways, I, I know that's a tangent. I'm sorry. I didn't need to get into that. But 
we've created this inflation and I know that Will Boost is probably working on that or maybe he just has a hard time getting Wii to make him more knives, but he's kind of playing on that by only ordering whatever, a hundred knives and then they sell out in 10 minutes and then you got to wait for the next one and then they're super inflated on the secondary market and everything. Um, these knives are right in that $200 range, uh, about, I think it's like 207 or something like that. Which is, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about uh, the value and whether I think it's worth it or not. Um, the one thing I'll say is what I would probably compare this to, but I don't have it with me because um, Steve has it. <laughs> He's had it for a long time now. But anyways, my uh, Metamorph, uh, Real Steel Metamorph, that's what I would compare this to. Obviously, being a front flipper, very similar size, um, pretty much would compete with this for the pocket. And I will say this thing's on another level from the Metamorph. Although the Metamorph was a $60 knife. This is a $200 knife, so I'm not surprised by that. Uh, Metamorph's also uh, aluminum scales. This is titanium. A lot of things like that. But as far as action goes, I actually think that they're pretty similar. Um, the only difference is I would say would be like the handle, uh, scales, everything like that. These This is on another level as far as the... Uh, fit and finish is going. Although the fit and finish on the Metamorph is excellent as well. Uh, this one just has like, you know, the through holes, the the um, locking pivot there, and you know, they're little subtleties. But I do, and the aperture and stuff, I do like this, the way this angles back like that, um, I do notice that it it's a little easier to roll out. But anyways, um, the hype on this guy, I know I got kind of on the tangent there, the hype was a lot of like, um, it's a lot of guys saying like, oh, this thing's nice and thin. Uh, it's super f fidget friendly with the front flipper. Um, it's got, you know, great anodizing jobs and stuff. There's a lot of different options as far as handle scales go. Uh, it's got M390 steel. Everyone's hyped on that. Um, it's just, there was a lot of hype surrounding it as far as like, um, a lot of reviewers really liked it as well for the action and, and fidget factor and just the, the tolerances and everything. Everyone seems to be pretty into this knife and it, it did get a, a fair bit of hype. Um, in saying that, uh, I was intrigued by it. I wanted to try one. Um, I got the metamorph and kind of like, uh, just seeing if front flippers were my thing. I really do like front flippers. So I did want to try one. And then, um, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Kyle again. Uh, 25 to knife. Uh, Kyle's one of my subs and he went ahead and sent me this knife and he also sent me a, the Peter Resenti Custom, which are on totally different levels. And guys, I'm just so grateful to Kyle. Uh, that's just really stellar of him to let me try these. Um, the Resenti Customs, what I, you know, that was what I was borrowing. Sorry, I'm just slipping. Uh, I actually had my finger in front of the blade. Uh, this was what it was all about, but this was snuck into the box. <laughs> so yeah, I was really stoked to uh, get this guy in hand as well. I didn't really talk about it with him, so he just kind of surprised me. And um, I was stoked to try it out. Um, and he also had sharpened this thing many times, so he was like, yeah, go for it, man. Use it, sharpen it, no problem. So yeah, that was really cool of him. And um, in unboxing it, the reality, yeah, guys really nice um very nice uh nicely done as far as the fit and finish is going um backspacer is a nice touch as you guys can see it's got that milled like kind of almost like machine look like gear uh, and it's got the backspacer integrated into that that's nice i'm not a lanyard guy but if you're gonna do it like that lanyard hole is perfectly done uh, the aperture on the blade's pretty cool looking and really fits with the design of the knife. Um, and then everything's, all the cutouts and everything's done ex exceptionally. As you guys can see, everything's chamfered very well. Which is pretty much Wii's uh, MO, you know. They don't mess around as far as uh, f uh, finish goes. Or fit for that matter. Everything's chamfered very well, as you can see. The aperture is a little sharp. That's the only thing I noticed that was, it's, it's actually relatively sharp, but not to the, uh, to like bother anybody really. 
I don't think that's going to bother anyone. But it might get caught up on, on, on something. Like some materials or something might get caught up on that. Just a little bit. One thing to think of. Uh, as you guys can see, the blade is chamfered as well. Really nice touch. The spine of the blade. This is all chamfered here. This is chamfered. There's a little bit of a sharpness right there, but that's no big deal. I didn't notice it in use. Um, you can see that the backspacer is chamfered like we talk about. I've talked about before on like the Keen, where you don't really notice whether that's even because of that chamfer, that micro chamfer there. It's a nice touch. It's just done very well, guys. Everything's chamfered very well and, and connects very well, meets very well. Pocket clip's done well. I'll get more into that later. Um, yeah, finish is done well. The anodizing's done very well. Everything looks very good. Um, finish on the pocket clip's nice as far as the chamfering and everything. Uh, they did do these like accent lines, which is a little kind of like maybe um, goes with their logo. But yeah, so really nice fit and finish. As far as the action goes, you guys can see that thing flies out however you wanna do it. Um, even rolling out, slow rolling I found was a little easier with this guy because of that angle. It's easy to break that detent. So slow rolling is a little easier than the metamorph. It's a little easier to get to that that um, and the jimping's done very nicely, guys. As far as finish goes, this jimping is done pretty much perfectly. It's like it doesn't bother me at all. Um, like it's never gonna give you chafing or anything, but it's if you push down, you get grip, and it's just excellently done, beautifully done jimping, guys. Pretty much perfect in my opinion. So, yeah, I can't really go from this side like a. A reach around is what I call it. I can't really do the reach around because I end up locking myself out. Um, I can't really. I mean, if you come out here, you can, obviously. But yeah, as far as doing the reach around like this, I I, I end up locking myself out because of the. <coughs> woo. Yeah, my coffee there. S spine of the blade just whack my coffee. That's nice. Um, you can't really do the reach around. I can do it like this, but other than that, it's 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 a little hard because of the narrowness of the knife I end up locking myself out but yeah um really fun action wise and the closing it'll stay where it is at this I didn't take this knife apart so I didn't try and adjust the the pivot but stays where it wants you know if you just leave it there it stays but if you shake it it's a light shake shut or you could swing it shut it's pretty fun to fidget with, I gotta say, guys. I have been, uh, played with it quite a bit. One thing I noticed is when I was shaking it, though, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to hear this. Yeah, you can't really hear it, but there is some lash, guys. And when I noticed that, it's like, it's a bit extreme as far as the sound it makes, but it doesn't hurt the lockup. Lockup solid. You guys can see you got about 30% uh, there maybe. Lockup is solid and I would never worry. No lock stick, no nothing like that. So that's really nicely done. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, the action on this guy. As far as in use, um, I'll go ahead and put some uh, of the footage on the screen right now. Uh, I did notice uh, in use that it does seem to be done very well as far as the grind. Um, it sliced really well, the stock thickness combined with the behind the edge thickness. Um, it just did exceptionally well as far as slicing. Um, and as I know I kind of talked about the 940 as a comparison. And if you're comparing the 940 in this, um, I will say this has, with the full flat grind, it does have a thinner edge, I feel like. or it, I don't think it has a thinner necessarily behind the edge um, thickness, but it just, it's got more space there for the, this, um, for the stock thickness to come down. And 
It just seems like it slices a little bit better than a 940 in that way. It does have a better grind for that. Although I can't say um, that the behind the edge thickness is, is um, a smaller number, although I, I think it is. Um, we'll find out in a second when I throw the calipers on it. Um, I did notice that this knife was very good in cutting though. And the M390 seems to be done well. Um, I did sharpen this guy up and when, as soon as I came off the stones, I hit it on three micron and it was hair whittling. So that's a nice touch and it, it does seem to be done well. Although, I will say that um, I don't think the HRC on this knife in particular, on this example, is done very high because it did lose its, its shaving sharpness quicker than I expected it to. Um, after I did put it to some work, it, it, it just wasn't as sharp as I expected it to be after some amount of work. And um, I did feel like it, it should have performed a little better. Um, but in saying that, I took it to the strop and with a few passes on the strop, it came right back. So it does seem to be uh, heat treated well. It's just maybe in a lower HRC, uh, which it wouldn't be that surprising because we have found that we um, isn't the highest with their M390. It does seem like they've been doing like a really good job with their, at least with their kneeling and uh, tempering process because the steel seems to be done well. It just, it just seems to be maybe a little soft on the HRC number. But, but <clears throat> excuse me, in saying that, I can't, I can't say without a shadow of a doubt. That's just um, my impression from, what, from my use um, and my experience with other steels and other M390. So um, I look forward. Um, obviously, I'm not going to have this heat treat tested because it's not my knife unless Kyle says, oh, can we send it to Kurt? Maybe we'll send it to Kurt. But otherwise, we won't be heat treat testing this. Um, but in saying that, uh, I, I think it performed fine. I think it performed within a level of acceptance. Um, I would never like want, I would never be upset and send this knife back to boost because I thought that it was underperforming. So in saying that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys back right now. Um, and then we'll go ahead and talk more about the ergonomics and the blade. Um, yeah, as far as ergonomics on this knife, guys, it is very similar to the uh, 940. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the 940 back in. Uh, this is actually not the one I think I had out earlier. Anyways, um, I have both 940s here. But yeah, um, this, to me, the 940 is just slightly uh, more hand filling, at least at this point, where I feel like you kind of notice that hand filling aspect a little more. And what that is, is I think it's uh, the thickness of the handle is slightly thicker on the 940. Although I might be wrong. Okay, so 4, 0.44. No, yeah, it's not. So that's not what it is, it's this dimension. Yeah, so it's this dimension right here. So as you guys can see, this is thinner here. And that little bit of thinness does affect the way that that feels right there. Um, I just feel like the 940 is like the minimum I can do as far as uh, thickness in my hand without feeling too thin. This just just slightly feels thin at this point right here. But in saber grip, it was excellent. Um, in hammer grip, it does feel a little toothpicky and tends to move in my hand. But it did work very well. And I didn't like, it was enjoyable to cut with this knife. So... I'm not, I'm not just a little gripe guys. I'm not really, uh, not complaining too much. Just something I noticed and I felt like I needed to bring it to attention. Um, and saying that, let me go ahead and check the, um, behind the edge thickness here. 15 guys. Yeah. That's where I noticed this thing really just coming to life is when I just started cutting with it. 13, 12 thousandths there guys. Wow. Twelve thousands, yeah, that's where the difference was, and the nine forty you're looking at. I don't know what this one is. This is the one I got replaced. This replaced the blade that was horribly ground. This thing's seventeen thousands. Seventeen thousands. So yeah, 
That's a significant difference, guys. And this thing definitely noticed it in use. And as far as the, I think the stock thickness is right on par. Yeah, 0.145, whereas I think the, um, I think the Benchmade, I think this is 0 0.12, uh, 0 0.11, 0 0.113. So yeah, um, with more stock thickness, we have a thinner edge. And that's due to the flat grind. And it's done very well. So this thing sliced excellently. And in use, it felt really good. I enjoyed using this knife a lot. Um, even though it felt a little toothpicky in the, um, in the hammer grip, it was something I could live with. And I definitely don't think that, um, if I came across one of these uh, at a good deal, I would still probably grab it. Even though I do feel like that's a little thin right there for my hands. Again, my hands, guys, uh, three and three quarters wide, four inches tall. And then from this point to the edge of my fi uh, middle finger, looking at six and a quarter to six and a half, depending on how you measure it. But yeah, uh, really, really enjoyed using this knife, guys. And I will say that I think that a lot of people would really uh, enjoy this. And if you're looking for a front flipper that's in the um, you know $200 range or something that's nicer than like a Metamorph, I would say this is a great option. If you're looking for a budget option, the Metamorph is a great option. And I think it would kind of get your front flipper, um, you know, if your <laughs> needs, I was going to say. But yeah, if you're like looking for a front flipper, I think the Metamorph would kind of get you there at a cheaper option. But this is on another level too, guys. I'm, I'm not going to kind of, I don't want to compare the two because this is definitely on another level. And you're getting M390 steel, although... Uh, I don't think it's necessarily uh, taken to the level it should be, but you know that's neither here nor there, and that's not what we're talking about today. But uh, another thing, uh, this aperture, guys, uh, you can't really use it to deploy. Like, I you can pinch, you got you can pinch grip it, and because of the sharpness of the aperture, you can kind of pinch it. But as far as just getting your thumb in there to deploy it, I can kind of grab my skin on the edge of that aperture because it's so sharp with my left hand, but not with my right because I end up pinching the lock bar. But yeah, don't really use that method. <laughs> I'd rather just slow roll it with the front flipper or pinch it if I have to, if I really don't want to bring it out like that. You could pinch it with both hands and really just make it slow roll for someone that, like a little kid in front of you or something. Just open it like that, it's nice. Really nice uh, touch with the aperture and it looks great. So unless that gets caught up on something, I don't find an issue with it at all. But in saying that, uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. I really do enjoy the knife. I think uh, if you guys are looking for something like this, uh, you can't really go wrong necessarily. And Wii's production seems to be, um, you know, superb for the most part, especially in their fit and finish. So... Yeah, I uh, really enjoyed this, and thank you so much to Kyle at uh, 25 to Knife for lending me this guy and the Resenti. Um, really stellar of you, man, and I really appreciate it. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.